Let us pray. At the cross, where I first saw the light, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Cathedral Church, as I come to you on this blessed Good Friday, I come wondering what is it, what is it about the cross? What is it about the cross that most violent and inglorious of symbols? What is it about it that we wear it around our necks to signal who we are as followers of Jesus? Why not wear a symbol of a fish? After all, this was the symbol that early Christians used to identify friend from foe during the height of Roman persecution. Or why not wear some symbol of the resurrection, maybe a rock? After all, it was not until after the resurrection that people became, came to believe that Jesus was Christ. What is it about the cross that renders it the perfect symbol for our Christian identity, bringing us to this place today, not only to reflect upon it, but to venerate it? What is it about the cross? This, the answer to this question begins, I believe, in recognizing what the cross epitomizes which is nothing less than the height of the world's evil and hence the height of the world's opposition to the very way and will of God. Be clear, the shouts of crucify him, crucify him, reflect the world's resounding no to God. Through each crucifying knell, the world, our world, is firmly rejecting all that God stands for as it is so perfectly revealed in Jesus. And so it is that in des the desolation of his pain and suffering, Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yet this we know. The cross is not about God's abandonment of Jesus. Rather, it is about the world's abandonment of Jesus God. Thus, in Jesus' cry, it is not so much his doubt in the presence of God that we hear. Rather, we hear the depth of his despair in being abandoned by the very world and the very people he has come to save, abandoned onto the cross. Hence, the drama of Good Friday begins. For the God of the crucified Jesus, that God refuses to abandon the very world that crucifies him. And that God refuses to abandon us. And so what is it about the cross? It is about the unwavering commitment of God to God's very world. Here's the thing. Even as the cross reflects God's utter solidarity with the crucified classes of people in the world, the most marginalized, it also reveals the solidarity that is God's commitment to the crucifying world itself even, even in the most God-forsaken of times, that is, even in those times when in the words of the prophet Isaiah, the world calls good for evil and evil good, puts darkness for light and light for darkness, puts bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, the cross makes clear that even though we have abandoned God, God has not abandoned us, no matter how deep the ditch we dig for ourselves, no matter how lost and astray we are from the ways of God, 
No matter how far it seems that we have descended into the very depths of crucifying hell, God does not and will not abandon us. God's commitment, that is God's love for us, is steadfast. And so it is that God is committed to us and our very world, even unto the cross. What is it about the cross? It is about God's commitment, God's commitment to God's world. And in as much as it is a symbol of God's commitment to us in the world, it is also a symbol of God's very call, God's very call to us. For the God that is committed to us is a God who is consistently and constantly calling us back, back to the ways of God. Take up the cross and follow me, Jesus said. We are called to the way of the cross that is the very way of Jesus' passion. Now, here's the thing about this word passion. It comes to us from the Latin noun passio, meaning suffering, from which we get the passive narr passion narrative as it refers to the suffering of Jesus. Yet, there is more to the passion of Jesus than his suffering, as there is more to the word passion itself. For in our everyday vernacular, when we use the word passion, we are not referring to our suffering. Rather, we are referring to our consuming interest, that is, our intense desire or enthusiasm for something, that which we set our hearts on, that is, our passion. And such was the case for Jesus. For his first passion, if you will, was not for suffering and death. Rather, his first passion was for the kingdom of God. Jesus' heart, as revealed through his very ministry, was set on showing the way to God's kingdom, the way that was justice, God's mercy, and God's peace. In this regard, it was the first passion of Jesus that was the kingdom of God that led to his second passion that was his suffering and death. Good Friday makes this clear. It was, as we have heard, because of Jesus' very passion for the kingdom of God, the kingdom that was God's perfect love, justice, and peace, it was because of that that the unjust, unmerciful, warring powers of the world crucified him. And so, Cathedral Church, the call to take up the cross and to follow Jesus is a call to be passionate passionate about that for which Jesus was passionate, the very kingdom of God. And thus, it is a call to us to reflect in our very living and moving and having our being in the world, to reflect God's kingdom through the justice, the mercy, and the peace that we do. And so, as the cross makes clear to us as well, to be passionate, to be passionate for God's kingdom in this our world, we know will not be easy. We know that it will no doubt come with some pain and some disappointment and some despair. That is the reticence, the reluctance, the refusal of the world and the refusal of even those we hold most dear to ourselves to do what is right, to do the just and the godly thing. Yet, even through the passion that will be the pain of disappointment, we are called to follow in the passion of Jesus that is the kingdom of God anyway. It is into the passion of Jesus that God calls us, the passion of Jesus that is God's kingdom, which brings us to the final thing about the cross, that I believe makes it the perfect symbol for our Christian identity, and that is this. The cross 
symbolizes, symbolizes the very crisis, the crisis of what it means for us to be Christian. Crisis, as in that decisive moment in which a decision must be made. Crisis, as in that word kairos that says to us, a time full of chaos, a time full of dis disruption, yet a time in which God is fully present, calling us, calling us to live into the way of God, calling us to make a decision, a decision to be either with those who crucify Jesus or to be with the one who is crucified. What is it about the cross? It is about the commitment of God to a world that abandons God. It is about the call of God to follow in the passion of Jesus. And it is about the crisis of what that means, for it always happens in a time when it is not the easiest of times. And so here we are, here we are on this Good Friday, reflecting upon the meaning of the cross. And we ask, what is it about the cross? that we wear it so boldly as if to claim, yes, that we are Christians. The cross indeed signals the crux of who we are, as in that Latin word for cross, for it gets to the heart of the matter of what it means for all of us who would dare to wear it. It gets to the heart of what it means for us to be Christian. For it is in the crisis of our time, responding to the call of the God who never abandons us. The cross that is ours to wear and to bear. Amen.